With the religion that Jesus followed is the same religion we follow. Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, it was all one message, one religion. People corrupt things later, but the original message is one message. The guy's a joke. He's one of the most ignorant, most pathetic Muslim debaters. He is so bad. He is on the level of Anadir Ahmed, Osama Abdullah, Sami Zatri, Basam Zawad. These are the lowest of the low, and they're so arrogant that they think they're good. People today will tell you Jesus is God, right? Or they'll tell you he's the son of God. Or sometimes they'll tell you he's a part of God. And they'll give you all kinds of different... But if you look at the original teachings of Jesus, before the, the, the Council of Nicaea, before they gave the divinity of Jesus a, a, a voice, the original followers, who were later on killed by other Christians, they believed in Jesus not being a divine figure, but being a prophet. Let's answer the objection and we'll be done. Was Jesus a Muslim? Now, what he's trying to do is play on the term Muslim as a generic description. What do I mean by generic description? Generic description, because the word Muslim means a submitter. Islam means submission or surrender. So anyone who submits to God is a Muslim. Let's go to Mark, Mark 9, verse 7. And a cloud came and overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son, hear him. God's will is to believe that Jesus is the Father's beloved son, the son whom he loves, whom you must hear and obey. Amen. Now go to John 6, 39, 40. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing but should raise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So according to Mark and John, the Father's will is everyone looks to the Son, trusts in the Son, hopes in the Son, obeys the Son, loves the Son, and honors the Son, not just as a prophet, but as God's unique Son, his beloved Son, the Son whom he loves, and then Jesus will raise them immortal at the last day. Does this sound like Islam? In fact, go to chapter 9, verse 30 of the Quran. See what the Quran says, if you believe Jesus is God's son. The Jews called Uzair a son of God, and the Christians called Christ the son of God. That is a saying from their mouth in this, but they imitate what the unbelievers of old used to say. God's curse be on them, how they are deluded away from the truth. So according to the Quran, Allah will curse you if you say Jesus is God's son, the son of Allah. And yet according to the Bible, true Islam, true submission is to submit to Jesus as the son of God, whom the father loves, whom you must obey and honor like the father. Because go to John 5, 22 to 23. For the father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the son, that all should honor the son, just as they honor the father. He who does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him. So the father's will is that my son will determine your fate. My son will judge you on the day of judgment and determine whether you go to heaven or hell, depending on how you respond to my son. And if you want my son to grant you eternal life, you must give him the same honor that you give me. So wait, the father wants everyone to love the son just as much as they love the father, to pray to the son just like they pray to the father, to worship the son and adore the son just like they worship and adore the father, to love the son more than anything, more than their family, more than their wealth, more than their life, and be willing to give up everything, even their life for the son, like they do for the father. And that's Islam. According to Jesus, was Moses a Muslim like Muhammad? Was Abraham a Muslim like Muhammad? Or were they true Muslims in that they truly submitted to the Son of God, whom they knew, whom they hoped in, whom they trusted in, whom they loved, and was waiting for him to appear in the flesh? Let's see what Jesus says. Go to John 5, 45 to 47. Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, in whom you trust. For if you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Wait, I'm confused. Moses wrote about Jesus, and then Jesus says, therefore, if you truly believe Moses, you got to believe me because Moses is writing about me and pointing you to me. How can Moses write about someone he didn't know? Well, obviously, he must have known Jesus in order to write about him, which means Moses knew Jesus and trusted in Jesus, according to Jesus, not me. Now let's go to Luke 24, 25 to 27. Then he said to them, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things? and to enter into his glory. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So Moses and all the prophets knew of Jesus, spoke of Jesus and wrote about Jesus. Interesting. 
So now let's read same chapter, Luke 24, 44 to 47. Then he said to them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name, to all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. So Jesus says, Moses wrote about me. The prophets wrote about me. The Psalms mentioned me. They all knew of me, prophesied of me by the Holy Spirit, and were trusting in me and waiting for me to come into flesh. Let's go to Mark 12, 35 to 37. Then Jesus answered and said, well, he taught in the temple, how is it that the scribes say that the Christ is the son of, God, of David? For David himself said by the Holy Spirit, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, David himself calls him Lord. How is he then his son? Okay, so Jesus just confirmed the Holy Spirit revealed to David that the Messiah, which Muslims and Christians agree is Jesus, the Messiah is Lord. And so David, by the Spirit, worshipped him as his Lord, calling him my Lord, and wrote a psalm confessing the Messiah as his Lord. Final one for my end, John 8, 56. Your father, Abraham, rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Wait, the... whoa, whoa, whoa. Abraham saw Jesus, knew Jesus, rejoiced in Jesus, was glad to see Jesus, which means his hope was in Jesus, and he loved Jesus, and he trusted in Jesus? Well, this only makes sense if Abraham knew who Jesus was, not saying the name, the person that we now know as Jesus in the flesh knew who Jesus was, trusted in that Jesus, hoped in that Jesus, loved that Jesus, and rejoiced in that Jesus. And that's what Jesus just said. Now notice 57 to 59. Then the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going to the midst of them, and so passed by. And so Jesus says, yes, I did see him, which is why I know his reaction to me. He saw me, and I saw him face to face. Do you know why? Don't let my physical appearance mislead you. I'm much older than 50. Let me tell you how old I actually am. As a man in the flesh, I'm not yet 50. But I'm more than a man, and I existed before I became flesh. Here's that word again, before he became flesh. I was around before Abraham was created. I was there when Abraham was created, and I continued to be long after Abraham died. So yes, I saw him face to face. So I know his reaction to me when he saw me, because I was there to see it. Because I've always been and will always be, because I'm that eternal word that became flesh, the Son of God, God Almighty, Thomas is Lord and God, and he's our God and Lord too, and we love and worship the Father, Son. There you go, guys. Brother, a Muslim could never accept the clarity of Scripture of those ancient words. Of course. But that's why he's going to say your Bible's corrupt, which proves our point.